All right, why don't we uh, get started? I think we're at the 3.32. So um, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Palo Pierce. I'm with Educorium. And with me today, I have Jenna, who is from BirdBrain, and she is the global business manager. We're happy that she's joined us today. And then we have Sarah, who is the learning and community manager. In addition, she happens to be the robotic fairy godmother, which we're very, very pleased to have her here. Um, so we're <laughs> gonna learn a lot of little sparkles and things like that today, and we look forward to that. So let me uh, just share my screen for a couple minutes and um, we'll go from there. Hold on. So Jenna and Sarah, you guys can see that, right? Great. So once again, my name is uh, Palo Pierce. I manage uh, sales at Edgeporium. And I thought I would just take a second. I want to welcome you today to our webinar, which is a focus on uh, social emotional uh, learning. And then in addition to, to that is also trying to get an update on what Birdbrain is doing in social emotional learning, but also a little bit of an update on their products and services and resources that are available uh, to be successful using their product. Um, one of the things I want to just take a second, this will be the only, the only paid political advertisement today or, or uh, <laughs> advertisement. And it's just a little bit about Edgeporium. And I just want to indicate that as an organization, we focus exclusively on educators and STEM educational technology. Our customers are predominantly K through 12 schools, libraries, colleges, and after school programs across the country. And we work in coding, robotics, coding robotics, drone robotics, virtual reality, esports, science kits, and a, and a host of other things. And the one thing we do offer is free guidance. As educators put together your projects, feel free to reach out by email or call us or what have you, chat with us, and we'll kind of lead you what we think is, we'll ask you to share your educational vision, and then we will talk to you a little bit about what products uh, are best fit you. And we're pleased that BirdBrain is one of our top partners and it's an excellent products, uh, suite of products, and especially with their, their robot, the Finch 2 has really come a long way, and we're really pleased that they're going to talk a little bit more about that. The other thing is we do provide an educational discount, and that does range based on manufacturer, uh, which is kind of uh, something we only provide to educators. And we also are a certified uh, minority business enterprise, which is important for sometimes for some of your purchasing standards and things like that and uh, which is great to see for us. So if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or, or uh, reach out to sales at Edgeporium or at Palo, P-A-L-O. I have a weird name. You'll probably remember it for a long, long time, but um, I also can help you out if something comes up. Um, just two other things. We are recording this uh, so that people who are not able to attend or maybe you missed something, had to step away or something comes up, and we will share that in an email that'll come out and there'll also be a blog with any type of resources and things like that Jenna and Sarah do come up with. And at the end, if you stick with us, we will be raffling a Finch 2.0 and we will be picking a winner today. And uh, you will see that uh, later on uh, when we close the meeting. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the fairy godmother, Sarah, to begin her discussion with us today. Um, we do encourage people to, you know, ask questions and things like that, and we'll interrupt uh, when it makes sense to kind of ask Jenna and Sarah those questions. Thank you, and we really wish, thank you very much for attending today. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sarah Fitzhenry. I am the Learning and Community Manager for BirdBrain, also known as the Robotic Fairy Godmother, and this is Jenna. Go ahead, introduce yourself, Jenna. Hi everyone, I'm the business manager at BirdBrain. And uh, we are here to talk to you today about social emotional learning with robotics. We'll be covering a couple of other subjects too. I'll be doing most of the talking today and Jenna is gonna be here monitoring the chat. So please feel free to send your questions, your comments, get that conversation going. Um, we wish that we could be sitting and chatting with you face to face. That's the most fun way to share our products and to really get your hands on them. But this is the next best thing. So um, don't be shy and feel free to talk to us through the chat. We would love to hear from you. Let's jump in. 
here's what we're going to be doing today. At the very top is the link to the slide. So if you prefer to follow along on your own, and we have some active links in the slides as well. So they're there if you want them. And Jenna is going to send that link to the chat for you to get to it easily as well. So we will start out by introducing Bird Brain Technologies, telling you a little bit about us. You will get to meet our robots. Then we'll be highlighting social emotional learning through robotics and accelerated learning through robotics. And we will close with lots of free teacher resources and goodies for you to take with you. So hang around to the end because it will be worth it. So starting out, Bird Brain Technologies, let us tell you a little bit about ourselves. So Bird Brain spun out of the Robotics Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. Our founder, Tom Lowers, was there getting his PhD in computer science and education. And he started researching and developing our products, trying to solve problems that he saw in computer science while he was there. Most of these problems had to do with gender equality and diversity and the huge gaps that he was seeing in computer science and robotics. And so from the very beginning, the question Questions, the research that we were based on had to do with closing those gaps in computer science. So when we say that we were created to promote gender equality and diversity in CS, it is not just something that we put on our website. It's not just something that we say. It is truly why our company was founded and why our products exist. Um, one thing that sets us apart, we are a research-based company. Everything is backed in extensive research. We have many PhDs on staff that feel very strongly about that. So our research is funded by the National Science Foundation, and we're also backed by Carnegie Mellon University. And our research we'll be sharing that a little bit with you later. Um, we believe that the best way to reach students is by supporting teachers. Our goal is to reach every student, which means we want to be with every teacher and in every school. So because we believe in supporting teachers and we love supporting teachers, all of our resources are free. I'm going to say this so many times throughout the presentation because I want to make sure that you know that our resources really are free. They're free now. They will always be free. We want you to take advantage of them. We are an 11 year old company. We are based in Pittsburgh, but we have remote workers along the East Coast. I'm calling in from my um, bright little rainbow office in Charlottesville, Virginia today. And Jenna, where are you? I'm in Wilmington, Delaware. So we, we are all over the place today. Um, but we are based in Pittsburgh. And finally, we believe that robotics is fun, creative, and that it is for everyone. We really mean everyone. Here's our mission. Everything that we do comes back to this main mission, to inspire deep and joyful learning in all students through creative robotics. So before we dive in, I want you to sit for just a minute. If you're in a space where you feel comfortable, close your eyes. And I want you to think about a time where you experienced truly deep and joyful learning. And this might have been an experience when you were in school and you were the one doing the learning, or since you've been an educator, an experience where you had that aha moment, that incredible moment with a student where you had really deep and joyful learning. Think it through. And how you're feeling right now, if you're anything like me, you're smiling, maybe you're a little goosebumpy, maybe you're a little warm. That's how we want you to feel when you are using our products and when you're integrating creative robotics into your classroom. We want that deep and joyful learning every time. So the bird brain difference, what makes our products different, you can check out this graphic on our website. So I won't go through it word for word, but some things we wanna highlight are learning materials. They're free, as I've mentioned, and will again, they are classroom tested standards aligned. Um, they include programming tutorials, lesson plans, all sorts of things. Our products are built to have a low floor and a high ceiling. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but that means that absolute beginners can build or program a robot in minutes, but you can also continue learning with truly advanced concepts and programming as well. We offer true interdisciplinary learning. You can integrate robotics and computer science into anything, any subject, anywhere, anytime. We're going to show you some really interesting examples of that today. Our products break stereotypes, not just on accident, but because that's what they were meticulously researched and designed to do. And our professional development, our team of educators provide virtual professional development, and it is flexible, available anytime, and you can probably say it with me by now, 100% free. So 
we want you to know when you leave today, here's what we want you to leave with. Robotics is incredibly collaborative. It naturally sparks teamwork and students working together. It is incredibly creative and gets students thinking outside of the box with things they never would have thought of before. And it is really engaging. And one thing that robotics doesn't always, doesn't always have a great reputation, but robotics is for everyone. Everyone can participate in robotics. And because robotics is so collaborative and creative and so engaging, it means that when you bring it into your classroom, you're gonna see innovation from your students, incredible real world connections that get them engaged and passionate about their products and levels of patience and persistence that are really hard to teach in any other subject. It happens naturally with robotics. And it also means that you are gonna get more bang for your buck. Our flexible devices go farther in your classroom and in your programs, and they give you a really big impact for a small budget. So speaking of, let's meet the robots. We're gonna start with the Finch 2.0. If you ever used the original Finch, this Finch 2.0 might look familiar to you. And I'm gonna let this video play in the background while I talk so you can see a little bit of the Finch in action. Here's what you need to know about the Finch. It brings computer science to life from kindergarten to college. I know that kindergarten to college is a big claim, but we really do back it up and we'll show you that in a few slides. Um, Finch integrates 10 years of teacher feedback about the original Finch. So this was designed for teachers with more than 15 years of teacher feedback, because not only do we have those 10 years of teacher feedback about the original Finch, which was tested in classrooms, and we have strong relationships with teachers who have given us feedback the whole time, but we have those additional years of the research from the National Science Foundation and from Carnegie Mellon University. So the Finch was not designed as a toy or for parent purchase or to be used at home. Everything about Finch was designed to be used in the classroom and to get students programming and experimenting with computer science. Finch is flexible across multiple devices and programming languages. You can use it with a tablet, a phone, a Chromebook, Mac, PC, laptop, desktop. You can use it with anything. And it is a really incredibly versatile little bot that grows along with your students. So one purchase is going to challenge your students for a long time. Let's go through some of these inputs and outputs, the features of your Finch so you know what you're getting. Um, looking first at the outputs, we have some wheels on the Finch. There are LEDs in the beak and in the tail, and there's also an LED array in the micro bit, which lives up in the tail. Has a buzzer, a marker holder, and a plastic brick adapter. And I know with my students, those are always the first things that they notice is that it'll hold a marker and you can draw with it and that you can attach Legos to the top. And our inputs, there are wheel encoders that allow you to track how many times the wheels have turned. On the bottom, there are some line tracking sensors. The distance sensor and light sensors are all integrated into the body of the Finch. And in the micro bit, there's a compass, an accelerometer, and some buttons. So you will get to see some of these features in action in our videos. Um, I love seeing the features of robots, but as an educator, I know the feature that I care about the most is always the durability, because we know exactly what's going to happen as soon as this robot gets into a kid's hands. <laughs> so I would not suggest trying this at home, but here are some videos that will showcase just how durable the Finch is. It is built to be very durable. It's also built around the BBC micro bit, lives up in the tail. The Finch has a battery life of more than seven hours, which means you don't have to run to charge it on your lunch break, which is really nice. And it comes with 30 plus activities, PD courses and coding tutorials. And again, they are all free. So the Finch is our physical robot. And now I wanna introduce you to the Hummingbird Robotics Kit, which is kind of the guts of the robot. And the cool thing about only having the guts of the robot is that it leaves it up to the students and to you to create the body and make it look like whatever you want. The Hummingbird Robotics Kit is a collection of lights, motors and sensors along with the controller and it's powered by the micro bit which fits directly into the controller and you can purchase with or without the micro bit based on your needs so we've got another video here playing in the background 
The Hummingbird Robotics Kit is hands-on computer science for fourth grade and up. We suggest fourth grade and up, you know your students better than anybody else. So you know what's gonna work for your class for your grade levels, but that's where we have seen the most success. The Hummingbird Robotics Kit is designed to bring 21st century skills and STEAM into every classroom and every subject. We really mean every classroom and every subject. There is absolutely no experience required. Absolute beginners can sit down and build a robot within minutes, and it's designed to work with friendly and familiar craft materials and recycled materials. I'm going to let this video play for just a little bit longer because really I want you all to see the anglerfish because that's my very favorite. Jenna, you're laughing. Do you like the anglerfish too? It's, it's so cool. Oh yeah, it's creepy but cool. <laughs> If you've seen, um, I don't remember if it's the first or the second Finding Nemo movie, but now I have a soft spot for anglerfish. There we go. <laughs> All right, here are some of the features of the Hummingbird kit. The, this is the premium kit pictured. And if we start in the center on the bottom, we have the actual hummingbird bit, the controller. And this is where the micro bit goes in if you purchase a micro bit and then the battery pack and the terminal tool so that you can get everything plugged in here even with little fingers that might need a little more help. Going over to the left, we have our single color and tri-color LEDs and then the sensors. Distance, sound, light, and a dial sensor all included. And then going over to the right, there are some servo wheels, plastic brick adapters, extension cables, and rotation and position servos, depending on what you want to do with them, and then your servo horns. Also some stickers to label these things, which are very handy. Hey, Sarah, just a quick question. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. you know, Microbit's been a challenge, uh, you know, across the industry in regards to availability. I know club packs, go kits and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're seeing some elongated lead times probably right now, probably we're think we're telling our customers January for just micro bits themselves. Wow. November, December, January. How, how, how's the availability through you guys with kits and stuff like that? Because I know you sell them with your kits. That's all Jenna, go for it, Jenna. I'll jump in here. Um, it is a really great question and we're really fortunate to have great stock right now. But to be honest, um, kits and finches are selling pretty quickly now that school year is really taking off. Um, so I feel very confident that for the next four weeks, we'll have no problems with stock, any size order. Um, you know, coming towards um, January and early spring, it's really hard to know what what kind of stock is going to look like because um, we have, you know, we're just seeing increased um, demand for these hands on tools after a year of not being able to use hands on tools. So great news right now. Um, but keep in touch with us and Ejuporium. Um, if you know, you're looking to bring these tools into your classroom in a few months, mm -hmm. keep in touch and we'll let you know where we're at. Great. Thank you very much. Of course. The one of the true superpowers of the hummingbird kit is it's flexibility and it's there's no expensive lab necessary no 3d printer no pricey accessories you don't have to have any of that whatever you have in any classroom and wherever you have it any materials that you might have the hummingbird kit can make magic all you need is time and creativity so we love seeing what teachers create in their different classrooms with their different materials there's really no limits to what you can do so I could talk about bird brain all day, but um, I think it's going to mean a little more if you hear it from the experts. So I'm going to share this video of teachers talking about what it's like to learn with bird brain. I want my students to be able to engage in authentic learning experiences. The creative capacity that the Hummingbird Kit provides is limitless, only bound by what a student is able to imagine and create in their mind. Anytime an ed tech company is able to come out with a product that helps pull that technological world into the real world is really beneficial to them. The Hummingbird is a way of having you see things and build things. It's a maker atmosphere, maker mentality, but where you have to use the knowledge that you have on how the different pieces of equipment work 
to create what you want to create. And that was one of the reasons I was kind of attracted to it in the first place, was that it could be done with anything. It wasn't just a canned kit um, that you handed to me and said, here, this is how you do this. It was a, a world of possibilities because I was able to say, okay, I can add lights and sensors and motors to anything. What do we want to talk about? It's a device that took my students from being active listeners to active learners because to see them come in and immediately get on task. And, you know, they didn't want to stop when it was time to leave. They're also learning about programming languages. They're learning how to code. They're learning how to sequence things. They're looking differently at everything. They're looking differently at content. They're looking differently at the process of making something. They're looking differently at each other and how they fit into their role as a team. The learning that took place, the deep thinking, working with the art concepts, it was powerful. It's just extremely powerful. So we mentioned before that we are really proud of the low floor and high ceiling that come with our products. So when we talk about low floor, high ceiling, we mean that it's accessible to all skill levels. So anyone can walk in with zero experience, but then there's also really limitless opportunity for depth extension and enrichment. And I wanna show you just a couple of examples of what that means. So low floor, high ceiling can mean working with programming languages. With Finch, you can work with icon-based, block-based, or text-based programming. The robot can work with all three. So your icon-based programming is picture only, perfect for beginners and non-readers. All you need to be able to do is drag and drop the block exactly where you want it. And suddenly you are controlling a robot, your programming. And when students are ready, they can move on to block-based programming, which provides more depth, more flexibility, more control, really get students thinking about those programming and computational thinking concepts. And then when students are ready to graduate to text-based programming, Finch can go along with them. That includes standard Java and Python. So whatever students are working on and wherever they're ready to go, our products can go along with them. Low floor, high ceiling can mean something different when it comes to projects. So on the left, we have a video of the Finch, just basic programming around a tape maze. This could be done with icon-based programming just by dragging arrows to tell the Finch where to go. On the right, you can see a similar challenge, but a lot more complicated. This is using programming that uses the tracking sensors to follow the black line. We've got distance sensors working to make the robot stop when it comes too close to another bot. We've got text-based programming to make the Finch move a specific way. And then of course, we have that specially designed set the Finch is moving around. So low floor, high ceiling, as complex as you want it to be. Another way to show our low floor, high ceiling opportunity is through engineering concepts. So on the left, we have a video that looks beautiful. This is from our Moving Masterpieces project. So they look incredible, but these are actually engineering wise, very simple. It's just one servo being programmed along with LEDs that are blinking. So you can make something really powerful with just those simple concepts. And then on the right, we have a project that's much more engineering complex. We've got winches and cranks moving, multiple servos going at once, controlling some of those larger figures. You could also use pistons, cable systems. We've got some pulleys in action over there. It is truly as complex as you can imagine. So low floor, high ceiling can mean multiple different things. Before I jump in to SEL and robotics, we have any questions about Finch or Hummingbird? Any ideas, anything that's been, been sparked from these slides? Okay, no one's interrupting me. So for now, oh, I'll go means on. Sarah, it means you're spot on. You're coming, you know. You're... That must be it. Thank you for the compliment. What can I say? <laughs> so. <laughs> Before we dive in, we will do a quick social emotional learning check in. So if you do SEL in your classroom, then this is going to look very familiar. If we were all together in the same place, I would ask you to hold up a finger because this is fist to five. So our question is, how do you feel about using robotics in your classes and or classroom? So you're going to be sending your numbers to the chat since I can't see you. A zero would be I don't understand it at all. A one would mean I need some help. 
A two would mean I need more practice and more examples. Three means I understand pretty well. Four means I mostly understand and I can show it. And five means I completely understand, I can teach it. So take a moment to send to the chat. How do you feel about using robotics in your classes and your classroom? You seen anything, Jenna? Yeah, we've got some people participating already. All right. Um, it's, I see really across the board, um, four, one, three or four, two, three, three, mm. four point nine. That's a great Ooh, one. Always room to learn specific. more. Thanks, of Tim. course. <laughs> there really is. And it changes every year, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yes. And and day to day. Some days I feel like a one and some days I feel like a five. So I understand that. Thank you for being willing to be honest with us. It is really um, an ongoing process with robotics in the classroom. Yeah. We have another so focus, three, four oh, and a three. We, a three, four and a three. All right. So we, it sounds like we've got a lot of people right in the middle. Mm -hmm. which is a pretty good place to be. It means there's still lots to learn, but you're willing to put yourself out there. I, res I respect that. Focusing on social emotional learning and integrating those skills with educational technology and robotics has been all over the headlines recently. And there is a reason for that. It's because it works. <laughs> this was just from one quick Google search about social emotional learning and technology and robotics. And there was one article that I found particularly interesting that I wanted to share with you. This is from um, the website, We Are Teachers. STEM skills aren't the only lessons students can learn from robotics. Each time students set out on a robotics challenge, they're also building critical SEL skills like persistence, collaboration, critical thinking, creative innovation, and teamwork. The list goes on. As teachers, we're tasked with molding the next generation of leaders, engineers, doctors, and scientists. And yeah, that's an important job. But you know what's also important? Teaching kids how to be good collaborators, thinkers, problem solvers, and citizens. And they make it sound like those are two separate things, but I think those really need to go together. I don't know about you, but I don't really want a doctor that's not a good problem solver. Um, I don't want a scientist that's not a good thinker or question asker. <laughs> I want my leader to be a good citizen. So as teachers, we want to create students that are the whole package that has all of these things. They've got the hard skills and the soft skills. And that's what integrating social emotional learning is all about. This graphic is from CASEL, the Collaborative for Academic Social and emotional learning. And it talks about the five main pieces for bringing social emotional learning into your classroom, self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and social awareness. And let's zoom in to look at what each of those pieces looks like with robotics. Starting with self-awareness, if you're talking about self-awareness with your students, you might be asking questions like, what am I feeling? Is it normal? Is it okay? How can I best communicate how I feel? How can I let someone know if I need help? An example of what this looks like with robotics I used the read aloud My Many Colored Days by Dr. Seuss. And because of those colorful LEDs in the finches beak and tail, it's a perfect way to get students thinking about emotions connected with colors. And you can even use that micro bit array to show some facial expressions connected to it too. Another look at self-awareness. Students might be wondering, who am I? What parts of my identity do I wanna share? How do I wanna share them? What communities am I a part of? Where do I belong? How can I share what I'm passionate about? And this is what I like to call an animate me board. So if you're asking students to think deeply about their identities and to share it, that could be really scary for a student that doesn't know themselves or doesn't feel comfortable standing up in front of the class and speaking. So by giving them the opportunity to animate themselves or to use some of their art skills and STEM skills in order to bring themselves to life for their classmates, you're giving students an opportunity to show off their identity and to introduce themselves in a new way that might get them excited and a little more comfortable sharing with the class. Self-management, the big one. <laughs> um, students might be asking, am I calm and ready to learn? Am I expressing my emotions appropriately and clearly? How can I help to regulate myself and find control? How can I tackle this challenge or task? How can I focus and finish my work? And a big piece of self-management is being able to recognize how you feel and communicate it. So here's one example of working with emotions. This is an emoji bot. 
So it uses a distance sensor and you can put yourself close to the sensor or far away in order to get the mouth to move, turning into a smile or a frown, or maybe you're halfway if you're not sure. It's another way for students to showcase their feelings, especially if they don't quite have the words, which we all know when students are feeling dysregulated, finding the words to describe how they feel can be really complicated. Responsible decision making. Students might be asking, how do my actions impact me, my community, and the world? What are the emotions behind this decision? What possible approaches or solutions can I consider? What have I learned from my past decisions that might be helpful with this decision? Did my actions help me reach my goal? These two videos are from teachers. First, we have a video from Ann Arnold, who's a math teacher in Iowa, who created an interactive noisometer for her classroom. Hi. Ha. Ah! And that is a great way for students to consider how their choices with volume might be impacting their neighbors. So if you're practicing responsible decision making, want to think about just how loud you should decide for your voice to be, there's a good way to see how it's impacting the people around you. And then Allison Bogart, a STEM teacher from California, created with her students this high five bot on the bottom. So if you're looking to help students celebrate when they do make great decisions, celebrate decisions they get them closer to their goal, an interactive robot like this high five bot might be really helpful for you. Building relationship skills. Students might think, how is that person feeling? How can I be sure? How do I know? What does a strong and healthy friendship look and feel like? And how can I build one or strengthen one that I already have? How do I resolve a conflict with a friend or a teammate? What makes communication effective? How can I be a good leader or teammate? As teachers, we know that reading and sharing stories is a really, really powerful tool for learning relationship skills. Learning through characters' experiences, through their expressions, through their choices, um, retelling stories and participating in role play and dramatic play. And robotics can be such a cool tool for retelling stories. Um, I'm guessing that if any of you teach elementary school, you will recognize this troublesome pigeon. And uh, here's one example of bringing a story to life with the finch. Thanks for watching things for me. Let me make it go a little Remember, faster. Don't let the pigeon. Oop, sorry. I'll start it again. Thanks for watching things for me. And remember, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. Can I drive the bus? 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 Oh talking about the vocal changes, what those red lights mean, how the pigeon might have felt when that word no flashed across the screen. Retelling stories can be a great way to work on relationship skills. Social awareness. Students might be wondering, what does this look and feel like from a different point of view? Am I getting the whole story? What other perspectives do I need to consider? What does it feel like to step into someone else's shoes? How would I feel if I was there and that happened to me? This video is from Costa Rica. Teacher Florencia Morado, who is a lab and maker teacher, asked her students to consider what kind of robots might be needed during the COVID pandemic. And so this robot is designed to keep people company when they are being kept in social isolation. So it has a distance sensor. When you get close to the robot and it knows somebody is in the room, it'll interact with you, move its arms, light up. It's a great way to keep people company for designing with empathy here. Another part of social awareness, how can I keep someone, how can I help someone that needs a hand? What's the social norm? Do I agree with it? What's my role in this global or national or community issue? Where does change come from and who does it come from? Can I make a difference and how? And here's an example. If we were to ask students to think about what they feel strongly enough about that they might want to protest or be a part of a social movement, they could create their signs and create their own little finch rally or protest. So before we move on, I just want to pause if there are any specific questions about social emotional learning and robotics before we move on to our next topic. Okay, I'm going to barrel through. We're going to move on to accelerated learning and robotics. We already know that the pandemic has created some 
unique, we'll use the word unique, unique barriers to teaching and learning. And as a result, schools have been granted large sums of money to increase engagement and to address those impacts. And your school administration might need specific evidence in order to spend that funding. So Jenna is going to help me out a lot in this section because she is kind of the wizard of this funding information. So Jenna, why don't you give us a little bit of information before we even dive in? Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, so Sarah's exactly right. We have this new funding available, um, and it's almost situated like a grant program in a way. And so when your administration is hoping to use those funds, they will have to provide evidence that um, the use of the funding is going towards a few keywords that the government picked out. And those are things like learning loss, summer and after school enrichment, um, SEL, is one of them. And so we want to put this put together this section to give you topics and language to bring up with your administrator with your administrators so that um, if you're hoping to use this fund to bring these tools into your classroom, you have a place to start the conversation. Um, when at the end of this, I'll talk a little bit more about those exact um, funding categories. We're going to go back to the headlines for this one. Um, use of educational technology to help increase engagement and accelerate learning has also been all over the news. I'm sure that you have seen it. And we have noticed that robotics have played a really big role in those headlines. So let's talk a little bit about why and why, if you're looking into robotics, our bird brain robots are worth your funds and your time. So as we mentioned earlier, robotics naturally lead to increased engagement. Robotics is hands-on, it's project-based. It causes incredible student engagement and motivation. That student ownership and empowerment, that deep and joyful learning that we are all about, it comes so naturally with robotics. This picture is from an Ohio school that used Finch robots to try to jazz up their summer school program. Students aren't always so excited about being in summer school, but these students got to engage in a battle bot program over five weeks using 3D printing, programming. They were working on team building, engineering design, they were giving and receiving meaningful feedback, and it took what could have been a summer school program that didn't have a lot of engagement and really took it up to the next level with robotics. Interdisciplinary learning. We want to get the most out of our instructional time and out of student curiosity. So when one activity can connect and enrich multiple subjects or units, skills, competencies, it's a better use of your time and it's a better use of student time. And Robotics can connect content areas, electives, specials, resource classes. There's really no limit. Our video on the left is a collaboration of science, English language, arts, art, and STEM. Julie Marsteller, who's a science teacher in Maryland, was working on weather with her students, had them read a magic school bus book in English language arts, and then brought different weather systems to life using the hummingbird kit. I think they took some artistic license. I don't recall Snoopy ever actually being hit by a tornado, but you know, <laughs> on the right, teacher Pam Amendola, who teaches English, British literature in Georgia, created a really epic collaboration with English language arts, drama, and STEM. In her English classes, she has students reading Macbeth. And so they're working with the drama teacher in order to really understand and act out and record the scenes. Then they are programming their Finch robots to act out the scenes complete with stage directions. And their dialogue is recorded and played with the Finches. So not only are they reading the story and having to understand it, but then they have to know it well enough to perform it and they have to get to know it from a director or stage manager point of view. So talk about mastery and really diving deep into that concept. They also get bonus points because they call this project MechBot, which I think is just the coolest thing I've ever heard. I really love MechBot. <laughs> Robotics has natural real world connections. So brainstorming and prototyping solutions to real world problems, we've all seen it. It makes students feel connected, important, and it helps to turn them into thoughtful, successful global citizens. Real world connections can also engage students' identities, their passions, it can increase ownership. This video is from Kim Wilkins and Tom Weiss, a computer science and science teacher in Virginia. They challenged students to create a device that would help a student that was looking to go to a full day's worth of school that was living with cerebral palsy. So the first invention that we saw was a crutch that folded up so it would be easier to carry. And here we have an improved motorized wheelchair designed specifically for teens looking to move around the school building. 
I love how excited they get when it works. They built it. They obviously know that it works, but just that ownership is there. You can really feel it in that video. And last but not least, I want to talk to you about authentic assessment opportunities. When we honor and celebrate students' unique identities, assessments are so different than just a standardized test or an essay. It can really increase student confidence, can reduce stereotype threat, challenge students' perceptions of their own ability, and it can really help them to see themselves as leaders. This photo is from one of the many schools that has used robotics as an assessment, and this one has to do with Percy Jackson. Students read Percy Jackson, and instead of taking a regular reading test or writing an essay, they were allowed to pick a myth or a god that they really connected with and showcase everything that they knew through creating a robotic project. This three-headed dog is super cool. So hopefully you're feeling inspired and excited to work with Finch and Hummingbird by now. And we really don't want funding issues to be a barrier for you. So Jenna is back with some great guidance on how to get robots into your school. Take it away. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to yeah, pinpoint some ways that we can support you in finding funding. Um, we don't offer funds ourselves and have that grant assistance um, with money, but we want to help you and support you in any other way we can. So um, probably most of you are familiar with Title I funds or grants in your area. And so if you are happening to write a grant this year, um, remember that we actually have a resource guide for you to copy and paste some language from. That's linked in this first orange button here called Grant Assistance. And basically it's going to be a way for you to copy and paste language, just make that process a little bit more quickly um, to have the right words around impact on students and measurements and all of those topics that can be tricky. Um, the next is that I want to talk about a little bit more about the grant funding. As Sarah mentioned, the government put aside this um, really great amount of funds for districts to use. Um, and it's what's called ESSER II and ESSER III funding. You might have heard those terms. That's specifically elementary and secondary. And so um, the idea is that in order to use the funds, your administration is going to have to provide some evidence that the products are based in research and that they're going to address certain topics like learning loss, um, social emotional learning, after school or summer enrichment. And so um, to help make that process a little bit more smooth for you, we linked in that second button, some research-based statements. So like we had mentioned in the top of the webinar, um, our company is really heavily based in research. We actually can make a statement and cite all of the white papers, all of the articles that you can use in, um, in this evidence provided to the government. So hopefully this will give you a tool to talk to your administration if you're looking to bring these tools into the classroom. And then finally, I just wanna mention that we linked here a demo program that we have. Sometimes it's really helpful to borrow a product and to show it to your administrators to say, this is exactly what's going to impact my students. Um, and so if you think that would work for you, feel free to check out that link later on. Back to you, Sarah. Cool. All just, right. Yeah, I just oh, wanna add a couple, yeah, I just wanna add a couple comments. I think, you know, we wanna commend a bird brain for, really putting the stuff out there that allows educators to to file and, and show some evidence based because we have seen some grant requests to get in and were rejected for ESSER 2 and even ESSER 3 stuff um, based on the fact that there was no real evidence stuff and so I mean the stuff you've done with Carnegie Mellon we've read that through it's great and then the fact there's logic in case you know actual results is just critical um, to getting approvals and things like that. So great job on that. Awesome. Thank you. We promised you free learning materials and you have stuck with us this far. So we are going to deliver. Um, each of the following pages has a link and it's linked in the slides. If you have the slides open on your own, everything is available on our website or stick around. And on the final slide, we'll have a QR code that will take you to our link tree, which have all of these resources linked as well. So I'm gonna move a little quickly because I wanna make sure that we have time for you to ask questions. But if I pass something, don't worry. There are lots of ways for you to get back to it. Here are a few of our free resources that have to do with Hummingbird. There's a Hummingbird project page and I'm gonna take you there. We're gonna go together. When you are looking through the Hummingbird page, you can search by grade level, you can search by subject, take a look through at some of the different projects that are available. And let's look 
at amusement park physics together. So if I wanted to bring this project into my classroom, I can see a video of it in action and hear some students talking about it. I can find out the standards that it might be might meet, look through objective and learning goals. I've got a photo gallery, lesson procedures, different challenges, the amount of time that they might take, which is super helpful when you're attempting to plan. So everything you need is right here in order to bring this challenge into your classroom. If you were looking for activities for Finch, the Finch activities are on a different page. Let's check that out together. Here we go. Finch activities are organized into beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And let's take a look at those amazing mazes. You saw some examples of those earlier. So I have a video here of what it might look like. Um, my favorite part of this video is that they program a little victory dance for the finch at the end and it's really cute. Um, we have the challenge here. Here's how to attempt it as a beginner using only outputs. Here's an intermediate version if you're using sensors and an advanced version if you're looking to go further. And a lot of the finch activities also have the materials that you'll need and integration if you wanna bring it into kind of an unexpected subject or a different part of your day, which is something that I thought was really valuable. We also have some general resources. There are printable instructional resources, like if you are going through your first hour of robotics completely new and you want something to guide you, uh, prototyping, curriculum planning, printable student resources, these troubleshooting cards and coding cards are super, super helpful, as well as our hardware guide that shows you what every piece is. And then we've got lots of classroom support here. So anything that you could think about building or making that you might need help with is here. And if you don't find what you need for support, we have a very helpful team that loves to answer answer questions. We're a team that, that loves the challenge. When we get new questions, we're like, oh, I haven't gotten that one before. So feel free to contact us. We also have free professional development. Now, this PD is not just any PD. It takes you step by step through everything you need to know from taking your robot or your device out of the box for the very first time and turning it on to really high level extensions that are gonna take you very far and challenge your students. We have PD for multiple programming languages. So no matter which language you're looking to learn in, we've got you covered. And of course, these, this PD is virtual. It's completely flexible. It's really fun. And of course it is now and will always be free. We do offer specialized professional development that can be tailored to your school district or to your school specifically. And if you're interested in that level of professional development, you can buy it through Eduporium and there's information on our website. Whew. We threw a lot at you. So uh, here's a QR code that takes you to the link tree. If you wanna take a closer look at any of those links, that button will take you to where you can contact us, but I am ready for some questions. Anything we didn't cover, any questions that you might have. Wow. Everybody's just got too, yeah. too much in the brain. Yeah. Hey, I, don't see yeah I, have, I, just, I just have one, Sarah, just to make sure. On the social emotional stuff that you showed and things like that, are those type of lessons and things like that in that, that classroom area you talked about that you showed? Absolutely. Some of the lessons are exactly from that website. Um, the When we saw the pigeon acting out, that's from right. our Finch Tales lesson. But a lot of the ones that came from teachers, teachers take lessons and really make them their own. And then they're proud and they share them with us and we love to feature them. So you might not find every single lesson exactly, but you'll be able to trace it back to where it came from. And if you have a lesson idea and you're not sure how to make it happen, oh, please, I am an educator with 10 years of experience and I work for Bird Brain now and I love helping teachers bring their visions to life. So I would love, love, love to help you with that. And any additional new activities or anything like that would, would also be added to your database there in your resource. Program. We are constantly updating. There is new stuff all the time. And please follow us on social media because we share tons of great, anytime there's a new curriculum, new project, something we want to show off from a teacher, we're very active on social media and we love sharing what we have. Oh, and someone did ask, and just a reminder to everybody that we will be sending out in a day or two, a copy of any resources and URLs and things like that, and a full recording of the webinar, if you're unable to attend or you ran into an issue and had to get off for 
uh, some reason. So that will go out um, and we will send out both the people who registered uh, to all people who registered and people who attended. So both will get it. You can share us with your friends. <laughs> exactly. Any other questions and stuff like that? Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Ooh, is the Finch robot waterproof? What a great question. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think back to all the durability testing we did. Um, I would say no, but I, I believe it's, you know, resistant to the typical, um, you know, like a, like a small splash sort of thing, but no, we, we don't want to dunk it into we don't want to bring it to the school bathrooms we don't want to it can go outside <laughs> yeah, um yeah. we tested it outside in sunlight but you know not when it's raining <laughs> that's a great question <laughs> it is a great question yeah. um that would be i wonder yeah i wonder what robots on the market are totally waterproof that would be an engineering challenge I, there's <laughs> one that i'm aware of but it, it, okay. it you know some of those things don't really kind of are really conducive for a classroom sometimes too Oh, spheros. spheros. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. It's interesting because the micro bit um, is exposed in our products. Right. And so that's yeah. one piece that you definitely don't want to get wet. Um, and what's mm -hmm. so great about the fact that the micro bit is removable is that if you already have a set, it just clicks in and out. So you can use that <laughs> micro bit with other tools as well, other micro bit tools. I'm laughing at the underwater finch in the future. We'll be sure to take that back to our director of engineering and see what she says about that. Looks like there's one another question, something about the keyboard. Is there a way to make the keyboard an import for the finch 2.0? Yes. Uh, it would be, um, let me think. Um, I think it depends on programming language you know, what's available. I think like Snap has so much um, room to manipulate the code. So I'm I'm almost positive that that would be there. Um, let's take the Finch in the school pool. Oh school. Um, but, I, but that shouldn't be a problem. It's you, so are you saying like um, the keyboard could be used as like a trigger, like a start an event for the code to run a program? That's definitely a common, um, a common thing to do, I think. Cool. Yeah. All right. Any other questions out there besides stick the finch in the pool? I got that. <laughs> yeah. Is anyone else doing a cool activity that you want to share in the chat? It's something that a robot that you're using um, that you or an idea you're wondering if it could work with the project idea. And while we're sharing ideas, I'm going to give a little plug. Our Facebook educators community has some really incredible creative yeah. educators in it, sharing ideas and commenting on each other's. So you can find it um, facebook.com slash group slash birdbrain tech. It is a very cool place to be if you're looking for a community of very creative teachers. Yep, absolutely. Cool. Any other last minute question? If not, if someone does have one, feel free to shoot us, you know, Palo at Edgeporium, and we'll make sure that we answer it uh, when we reply back with the recording and the blog material. So I do want to thank um, Jenna and also the fairy godmother for robotics, you know, Sarah. That was an excellent job. We really enjoyed it. Thank and, you. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we learned something too. So.